Hello everyone. MSM and Great Plains College welcome to our MSM Agent E Summit 2020 live. We know that COVID-19 pandemic is affecting all of us, but we should not let it stop in improving our minds, shaping our skills and connecting with each other. This session will be taken by Christy, Manager Admission International at Great Plains College. Before we start, I would like to go through the basic features of GoToWebinar. Please note that this is a webinar and your video and mic will remain inactive during this session. There are multiple options in the control panel for your ease, raise hand, questions and handouts. If you have any question relating to the college, please click on the question mark icon in your control panel to type your questions. Our support team will be answering the question during the presentation and few of the questions will be answered by Christy. You can download the handout by clicking on the file icon of your control panel. Now handing over to Christy for the presentation. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's uh, early morning here in, in Saskatchewan, but I think it's uh, evening there for you. So I uh, hope everyone has had a great day. Uh, these are, as Shivani said, uh, very unusual times, but I certainly appreciate the efforts uh, um, that MSM has provided to have us uh, connect and uh, still continue to work together and uh, provide opportunities for students. So uh, I represent Great Plains College, which is located in Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, Saskatchewan is uh, a province that is in the center of the country. It is uh, um, agriculture and oil-based industries. The uh, the landscape is very beautiful, um, very flat country, but uh, but very scenic. So we're very proud of the the province that we live in. Okay, so uh, basically um, the the province of Saskatchewan uh, offers a number of fantastic opportunities for international students. Uh, in terms of the uh, economy, um, the opportunities for settlement, uh, work opportunities, opportunities to live and, and have a family, uh, all wonderful opportunities for, uh, for international populations. So you can see the general area of, um, of the province. Uh, like I said, in the middle of the, the country, the, um, the main campus of Great Plains College is um, near the southern um, border of Saskatchewan, which is uh, bordering on the United States. So some of the other um, aspects of Saskatchewan that are um, sellable features, I guess. Uh, we have a very low cost of living in comparison to other uh, parts of Canada. So in comparison to the main um, kind of cities that people know, which are Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver, uh, Saskatchewan's cost of living is, is in some cases 40% less. Uh, so we're uh, a, a very affordable option for students. Uh, the province of Saskatchewan has used immigration widely over the past uh, few decades, in fact, to try to fill um, work opportunities, to try to fill uh, skilled jobs. And so the province has developed a very culturally diverse landscape and uh, has become a very welcoming uh, place for uh, international populations. Uh, one of the, the main questions is always about the weather. Uh, the weather in Saskatchewan is, uh, well, it's very Canadian-like, I guess, in the sense that uh, we have four seasons. Um, one of those seasons is particularly cold, uh, <laughs> but the other three seasons are, are quite seasonal. So. Uh, for example, right now we are in our spring season, so the temperatures are hovering somewhere in the 20 degree range. Um, by the time summer comes around, then we experience temperatures anywhere from uh, 28 to 34 degrees, sometimes warmer. And in the fall, again, we 
uh, experience temperatures that are somewhere in that kind of 16 to 21 range, uh, sometimes warmer again. Uh, so the winter season is the one that, of course, um, international students from warm countries are most interested in. And, uh, you know, there's there's no way to, to sugarcoat the fact that it is uh, a cold uh, season and the temperatures do fall well below zero. But I always like to tell um, students that when they arrive in September, the weather is still quite warm. Uh, and then it slowly gets colder as the uh, year progresses. And so it's not until probably like mid-November that the weather starts to get snowy and cold. And so the, the temperature uh, slowly drops between September and November, and it allows them to acclimatize um, quite easily. Uh, and, um, you know, in, in the uh, numerous years that I've been involved in this industry, I've never, ever had a student leave because of the weather. So <laughs> it's uh, certainly something that, um, you know, is, is uh, an aspect of living in Saskatchewan, but it's not a, a, a deal breaker by any means. They, they certainly, um, students certainly love the experience of the different climate. They love the experience of, um, of snow and all of the amazing activities that come with, uh, with the snow. So, so yeah, so although, um, you know, it, it can be seen as a, as a, uh, a downside of studying in Saskatchewan, I really believe that it's uh, one of the things that students end up enjoying. Um, and and many students from hot countries often say that they actually love the cold weather. So that's quite nice, too. All right. So there are two major cities in Saskatchewan. The, the population of the province, uh, the entire province, is just over a million people. So we're pretty sparsely populated. Uh, which is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, we've used immigration to try to attract population to the area. But we have two major cities in the, the province, Saskatoon and Regina. So the two cities uh, are about, um, you know, anywhere between 200 and 300,000 people. So, you know, by Indian standards, that's still pretty small. But uh, but anyway, the... Um, uh, Main cities are um, where the large institutions would be. The regional college system, of which Great Plains College is a part, uh, was created in order to try and, and provide educational opportunities in as many places as possible. So um, the Great Plains College campuses exist in six centers outside of our main cities. So um, at this point, uh, our main campus is in a city named Swift Current. Uh, so that would be the, the campus on the right-hand side there in the picture. So the Swift Current campus is uh, the main campus for Great Plains College. It's the largest campus. Great Plains College and Swift Current is the largest city uh, that one of our campuses exists in. So um, the other five um, campuses exist in smaller cities around the province. So the, the six campuses that we have uh, would be mostly in um, the, the southern half of the province, I guess. So the um, the one campus that we have that would be closest to um, a city would be our Warman campus, and that's about uh, 15 minutes outside of Saskatoon. So if students are quite concerned about living in a, um, an area where the population isn't all that concentrated, Warman is a great opportunity for them because it would still allow them to be quite close to a, a major city. Um, Okay, let's continue on here. So a little bit about Swift Current. Uh, it's the, the population is uh, in and around 20,000 people. Um, just just a reminder that because our population is is pretty sparse in the province, uh, cities the size of, of Swift Current are pretty common. So 
we have our two main cities of Saskatoon and Regina, and then we have an entire host of cities that are in this um, population range. So uh, in, in essence, the city of Swift Current is considered one of Saskatchewan's larger centers. And uh, so these centers have all of the amenities that people need to, to you know, live a, a really full, rich life. So uh, in terms of entertainment and dining and um, employment, um, you know, schools, all of those things exist in these smaller cities. And, um, and so people are, are able to, you know, still lead lives that, that are um, full of activity. So Swift Current is, as I said, the major center in the southwestern part of the province. And uh, because it's near, uh, nearer to the south, the population, or sorry, the, the climate in Swift Current is um, uh, quite uh, temperate. So if we think about Canadian temperatures, uh, really the, uh, the climate in Swift Current is quite, uh, quite a bit more mild than uh, one might think about Canadian weather. So uh, that's one of the, the nice things about the south uh, part of the province. Okay, so uh, our second campus that has international student uh, programs is Warman. Uh, so Warman is, uh, as I said, about 15 minutes outside of Saskatoon. Many of the students who study there choose to live in Saskatoon and commute if they can, although there are lots of opportunities for accommodation uh, right in the city as well. Um, it is a... Uh, would, we would call it a bedroom community. So it's a community that was that that has grown because of its proximity to Saskatoon, uh, but still lots of different services and uh, shopping opportunities and activity um, activities there for people to enjoy. So um, it's it's quite a vibrant uh, new city in in Saskatchewan. So uh, quite a beautiful spot. Uh, so the third campus that we have that uh, international students would probably be one that would be, um, it would be the most unique experience that students could have. Um, so these cities that, that are a population of uh, around 5,000 are even more common in Saskatchewan than cities of Swift Current size. So Small communities um, spread across our province are, are very, very common. Um, and a lot of people are, are nervous about the idea of living in a community that has a population of 5,000. Uh, they think that there aren't opportunities there or there aren't, um, you know, activities that can keep them busy. Uh, however, this is truly not the case. Um, in Saskatchewan, every community uh, really tries it's best to provide as many services as possible within the community, no matter what the population. So um, in Kindersley, there is a population of 5,000 people. Um, in, in many circumstances in Saskatchewan, there will be the main um, community area, I guess. And then because we are an agricultural population, uh, a large population would live outside of the main community um, on uh, farms and so basically the surrounding area of Kindersley would have a population of about 20,000 people uh, once you take into account all of the uh, population outside of the the community itself. So um, there are again lots of activities for students to do, tons of job opportunities uh, for them while they study. Uh, so you know the the job of an agent, I guess, in, in um, marketing Great Plains College uh, has to be one of um, helping students to understand that these opportunities um, really provide a unique opportunity for them to experience, you know, Canadian culture uh, at the forefront, uh, that their um, ability to 
live and work in a community of this size uh, is is exceptional and in fact job opportunities uh, in the smaller communities are normally easier to find than they are in the larger cities so so we really ask our agents to uh, to try their best to help students to understand that our smaller communities provide opportunities um, that are really quite excellent. And I also you know, want to point out that many of the students that come to our smaller communities um, really end up having a, a almost better experience. Um, our smaller communities are very well known for being very welcoming. Uh, they're very interested in, in the immigrant population, so therefore they, they kind of um, take that immigrant population and they, they really make them feel welcome and a part of the community. So um, I always say that, you know, in um, circumstances where maybe students are a little bit nervous about living in a new culture, in a new country, uh, small communities are an excellent way for them to make that transition uh, because they will really find that their, um, their that welcoming atmosphere will really make them uh, feel comfortable very quickly. So Great Plains College is a designated learning institution. Um, it has been around for many decades. I, I think um, the, the inception of Great Plains College was somewhere in the late 50s, maybe early 60s. Uh, it has been around for many, many years. The um, uh, international aspect of Great Plains College is just going into its third year. So it's relatively new uh, in terms of um, our institution, but the, uh, the programs that we've run in uh, the last three years have been very successful. We've had a very high rate of, uh, of uh, success with our students. The students have been very happy with the programs and uh, what we have to offer. And I really am a strong believer in the uh, uh, small institution experience for international students. I really feel like um, international students come to a new country with a specific set of needs that um, that are very well met by the small college system. So, for example, you know they they need to integrate into a new country, new culture. Uh, sometimes there's language supports that are necessary or academic supports that are necessary. And when you go to a huge institution, uh, sometimes uh, you know students can get lost in the in the shuffle of of a. a you know, a class of 300 students. Uh, Great Plains College uh, really prides itself on ensuring that every individual student, whether they be international or domestic, are provided with the supports that they need in order to be successful. So um, I think that's a, a really, a really great feature for um, international students who are are coming to Canada to study. So uh, the class sizes at Great Plains College are, are limited to, um, you know, I would say 24 students would be the largest class that we would have. So uh, again, you can see how that would be beneficial for students who require just a little bit more support in their, uh, in their education. So basically, um, you know, a very nice, um, combination of, of features for international students. The um, atmosphere on each campus is also very, I want to say family oriented, you know, it's, it's, all, um, it's all very uh, geared towards making all of the students feel as if they are a part of that campus. And so that also is an, an excellent um, feature for international students because often they will arrive they'll have very few local connections and it's important for them to make uh, those connections and find a group of friends and uh, a, a community that that they can call uh, their support group so um, that 
aspect of the Great Plains College campuses is another feature that's really great for international students. On the Swift Current campus, uh, particularly and only on that campus, uh, we have a varsity athletics program. So if students are interested in participating in, um, in athletics, then certainly they could try out to become a Sundog, which is the college team name. And uh, that's another opportunity for them to diversify their experience uh, while studying in Canada. So across the entire six campuses, we have about 4,500 full-time, uh, part-time and casual students. Um, the, as I said, the uh, one of the selling features of Great Plains College in our mind is the opportunity for uh, students to have an excellent classroom experience. Um, so they have a lot of access to their instructors, uh, a very open line of communication for them to uh, receive support if they need it. Uh, if they need additional supports outside of the classroom, then of course those are also available, whether it be subject-specific support or language support. Uh, there's, there's always um, opportunities for students to access those types of things. Uh, there is a very strong student association within the college. So at every campus, there is a, uh, a student association and international students are always invited to join the student association so that their voices can be heard and uh, they can certainly have a say in uh, any improvements that they would like to see on campus. Um, the Swift Current campus in particular has been recently renovated, a multi-million dollar renovation, and the facility is beautiful. Uh, it involves a, a large um, student lounge, a cafe area, um, an opportunity for students to have a study space that's quiet, so um, really beautiful facilities for students to study. So one of the um, really great aspects of uh, the province of Saskatchewan has been the, um, the infusion of, of government support for the immigrant population. So governments have uh, put in place these newcomer welcome centers across the province and the newcomer welcome center um, system, I guess, is specifically for providing support for, for it, the immigrant population. So basically, the Newcomer Welcome Centre um, will provide um, housing support, they will provide uh, settlement support, uh, they'll help students to go to the grocery store the first time, they'll help students to go to the doctor the first time if they're nervous about those sorts of things. They really just provide the utmost support to make sure that um, the newcomer population to any area uh, feels like uh, they have someone, um, even if they've arrived um, as a single student with no connections whatsoever. So the Newcomer Welcome Centre has been very, very valuable to our international student population. Um, they have provided them with uh, lots of different services to enhance their experiences within our communities. Um, you know, they uh, are, are there right from the orientation, um, right through to their application for postgraduate work permits. So they, and then they provide a host of services in between. Um, over and above the service piece, they also provide a social piece. So they put on several activities through the year uh, for uh, not only the newcomer population, but for the entire community so that there is opportunity for the immigrant population to meet and get to know some of the domestic population. And uh, so just a lot of wonderful opportunities for students um, to access these services. So we, uh, at, at our orientation, we connect students with the Newcomer Welcome Center. Um, they register for their services and they become, uh, you know, on their contact list. Uh, they are 
then invited to every event that the Newcomer Welcome Center holds. They also provide volunteer opportunities for students within the community, and which is a great way for students to uh, meet and, and get to know other people, but also to you know, kind of immerse themselves in the culture just a little bit more. Um, they're also wonderful when it comes time uh, for students to be looking for postgraduate employment. So they will assist students in the job search, uh, resume creation, um, interview practice. Um, they'll, you know, send opportunities to students if they know that they're applicable to them. Um, and in the end, then they will help them with the uh, application for postgraduate uh, work permits. Um, they will even walk them through the process of becoming a permanent resident. So, uh, like I said, a vast array of, of opportunities for uh, for students that is uh, wholly sponsored by the Saskatchewan government. So currently, the Great Plains College um, offers three programs, um, all of which have a September intake. Uh, and uh, the Administrative Assistant program is one of our programs that has a January intake. So the Administrative Assistant program is a nine-month certificate program. Um, it prepares students to become executive assistants in uh, many different industries or areas. Uh, the graduates from this program are working anywhere from law offices to sports clubs, um, just a vast array of opportunities for students. Um, the the uh, nine-month certificate program includes a three-week work term, so uh, students in, in um, this program need to apply for a co-op work permit at the same time as they're applying for their study permit. And uh, that three-week work term is really valuable for not only practicing the skills that they've attained during their, their certificate, uh, but many times um, if students are, uh, you know, prove themselves to be effective, then they can uh, certainly, um, you know, have the opportunity to have that three-week work placement transfer into a uh, job opportunity, so a great opportunity for them there. Um, students who take the Administrative Assistant program would be eligible for a one-year postgraduate work permit, so uh, that's one of the uh, features of that program. Uh, the Business Diploma program is our two-year program. It has an intake in September, and um, it is the, the kind of the foundational uh, basis for um, starting a career in business. <coughs> Excuse me. So the um, September intake is um, eligible for that program. And uh, it's, it's quite a, a heavy program. It, it has a lot of demands on the students, uh, but the, um, you know, the, the two-year program then results in a three-year postgraduate work permit, which provides students a five-year opportunity in, in Canada, which is wonderful for them. Uh, within this program, there's a lot of really great uh, opportunities for students to practice their skills um, practically. So um, the program itself provides two basic opportunities that are really our, our highlights, uh, one of which is a, um, a formal event that's put on by the college and it allows students to uh, connect with successful entrepreneurs from across the southwest of Saskatchewan. So uh, basically the, uh, the students um, have the opportunity throughout the evening to, um, I guess, kind of like interview successful entrepreneurs from the area. So they, they speak with and they question uh, people who have been successful in the area of business uh, in order to kind of gain some of that information for their own future careers. Uh, the second one is uh, an opportunity that's based on a very popular TV show in Canada. Uh, the TV show is called Dragon's Den. And the, um, the 
I guess the idea behind the show is that very wealthy um, entrepreneurs come together and they hear business plans from up and coming entrepreneurs and they can invest if they so choose. Uh, of course, we don't offer the opportunity for investment in, in students' businesses, but we do offer them the opportunity to pitch their business plans to a panel of successful entrepreneurs from the uh, from the area and uh, then those entrepreneurs will give the student uh, feedback valuable feedback on how they can um, improve their business plan because the business plan is such an important part of of any business uh, students world um, so that opportunity is really great too for them to learn from people who have had success in that field um, the continuing care assistant program is our health related program it is an eight-month program with a September intake and um, so it is uh, our, our entry-level health position so um, many people who are already working in the health industry in their home countries um, we have we've had nurses uh, we've had um, people who are you know kind of care assistants in their home country come and take this course and it's a, a wonderful way for them to kind of get into the the health field in uh, Saskatchewan which is which can be a kind of daunting thing to do uh, without studying in in Canada so uh, the continuing care assistant program um, provides students with the opportunity to have three practical placements within the program. So three times in that eight months, they will go out and they will work with different organizations to practice their the skills that they're learning and to get feedback from people in the industry. Um, the wonderful thing about this program is that there is an exceptionally high demand for for these people uh, so this program um, once they complete this program then if they have proven themselves to be effective then uh, they will have a job offer um, very quickly which is wonderful for their um, permanent resident uh, uh, process if they're choosing that path. Uh, just one thing to note for September 2020 is that the Continuing Care Assistant program is actually full. Um, it's very high demand program, so it fills uh, quite quickly each year. So, so for September 2020, at this point, um, we have uh, all the applications that we can take. Uh, now, if you have students who are quite interested, then of course you can keep in touch with us. And um, you know, as the visa process uh, takes place, then uh, maybe there would be opportunity for applicants uh, a little bit later in the intake. Okay, so just a few other opportunities or information pieces about the Administrative Assistant Program. Um, the salary range for a starting uh, administrative assistant would be anywhere from 46,400 to 68,900 for um, an administrative assistant position. Uh, the cost of the program uh, for September 2020 is 13,600. And all of our um, program costs, I guess, include uh, all of the students' expenses for their academic program. So um, any of their academic costs, their tuition, any of their student fees, um, their uh, health insurance, as well as all of their books. So when students arrive, then they are um, kind of settled up with the with the institution in terms of their fees there are no additional fees on top of the the main tuition cost so for the administrative assistant program we're looking for students who have successfully completed a grade 12 diploma um, we are looking for students who have uh, um, they have some math in their background, that's important, uh, something that would be equivalent to a grade 11 or 12 math in Saskatchewan. Uh, and we have a minimum um, IELTS requirement of 6.5 overall with no bands less than six. 
And due to the current circumstances that we are all in, uh, we've also adopted the uh, Duolingo online language assessment, which uh, um, we require a minimum score of 115 for this course. So, okay, so the business diploma course uh, would have an average uh, starting salary of about 76,700 in Saskatchewan. Um, the program cost for the business diploma, of course, it's a two year program, and so the first year is 17,500 and the second year is 14,500. Now, this program um, has some excellent opportunities for scholarships. So what the um, institution has done is it has provided students in this program the same level of scholarships as our domestic students for their second year of study. So based on their marks in their first year, then they would uh, be able to apply for scholarships that range anywhere from $500 to $5,000 in their second year. So very generous scholarship opportunities for students and uh, hopefully the opportunity for them to help pay some of the high costs of education. Um, you know, as we know that, um, you know, international students certainly, um, you know, do pay high tuition costs. So hopefully that would be of assistance to them. So the admission requirements, uh, a grade 12 diploma, um, we've since had a change uh, of our admission requirements in this area and we no longer require math. So that helps out students um, in the commerce stream from India. And um, basically uh, the IELTS requirements are 6.5 with no bands less than five. Um, you know, once the IELTS is, is um, available again, uh, I, I believe that immigration really would like to see scores no uh, less than 5.5, so uh, just an immigration piece there. Uh, the Duolingo score that we accept is 110 for this program. And then the Continuing Care Assistant Program has uh, an average annual salary starting at about $42,000. Uh, the cost of this program is $18,000 uh, for the year. Again, all costs are included. Students have to have successfully completed a grade 12 um, equivalent and they would have a minimum average of 60 and uh, no courses less than 50% in any uh, core areas. The IELTS scores that we accept are 6.5 with no bands uh, less than five. Uh, the Duolingo score is 110. So we are accepting applications currently until the 29th of May. I suspect given the circumstances that that deadline will be extended, but uh, uh, at this point, we're hoping to get a little bit of a, a sense of how many students are, are willing to, to study in September 2020 uh, by the 29th of May. So if you have applicants that are interested, please have them apply before then. Uh, applications can be done online and uh, students will fill out the application form. It takes quite uh, uh, not, not much time at all and uh, they can upload all their documents and at the end of that application process there's a link to Flywire which we use to pay the application fee which is $125. Um, so once, uh, once students submit the application, then in the administrative assistant and business diploma programs, um, then normally it takes us about three days to get back to them on whether or not they're eligible. Uh, in the continuing care assistant course, it takes uh, more like three weeks because we have to send um, those documents away to our partner for um, eligibility assessment. So three days in administrative assistant and business diploma and more like three weeks in continuing care assistant. So just so students are aware of uh, the time frame that they'll be waiting. Uh, once we receive everything that um, that they that we request in the application, um, then what happens is 
we will assess the application. If the student is eligible, we will send an offer letter. And that offer letter will ask for um, a tuition deposit. If the student is applying through the SDS, that tuition deposit, of course, has to be 100% of the uh, tuition for their first year. If they're not applying through the SDS, then they um, we would be asking for 50% of the tuition deposit. Uh, we normally ask for that within 30 days of the date of the offer letter. Uh, this year, given the circumstances, then certainly we're you know quite a bit more flexible with um, when students pay that tuition deposit, as long as it allows them enough time to uh, submit their uh, study permit application. Then you know we're we're working with students to um, make that as easy as possible for them. The remainder of the tuition, uh, if they pay 50% uh, tuition deposit, the remainder of the tuition is due by November 1st of the program year. Um, and of course, again, we use Flywire to accept all international payments. So once they have paid their tuition deposit, then of course we'll send the letter of acceptance. And then of course we look to the agents for their assistance in applying for study permits um, for the students. And um, yeah, just uh, of course we're always available for answering any questions that you have uh, in regards to that process. So some study permit application, which my experience has been that, um, you know, our partners in, in India are really great at uh, uh, helping students with this. So thank you all for that. Appreciate that a lot. So just a few other uh, points about Saskatchewan as a study destination, um, or Canada, I guess, in general. Uh, in Canada, you can uh, work while you're on a study permit. So students can work 20 hours per week while they're studying. Uh, I suspect for 2020, the, the government regulations that have been put in place uh, due to COVID-19 will continue. So currently what's happening is that international students um, can work uh, any number of hours while they study if they're working in an essential service, uh, which many of our students do because an essential service is any food uh, industry or, um, you know, any kind of uh, helping industry, I guess. So uh, those people are allowed to work full time if they so choose. Uh, the postgraduate work permit is another um, great feature about the study in Canada uh, opportunity. So I've mentioned already the one-year programs provide one-year postgraduate work permits and the two-year program of course uh, results in a three-year postgraduate work permit which is great for them. Um, in terms of Saskatchewan in particular, uh, the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program uh, has one of the greatest pathways to permanent residence in the country at this point. So basically, uh, students need three things in order to be able to apply for permanent residence. So they need to have a uh, completed degree diploma certificate from a Saskatchewan institution. Uh, they need to have 960 hours of work experience and the work that they do while they study can accumulate towards that 960. So it normally takes about a year at 20 hours per week to accumulate 960 hours. Um, then the third thing they need is a job offer in the field that they studied. So I like to use continuing care assistant as an example here because in the field of continuing care assistant, um, students will study for eight months and have a completed uh, certificate program. Uh, while they study, they can work. And so um, within eight months, they would probably accumulate somewhere in the vicinity of 800 uh, or so hours of, of work experience. And then uh, shortly after they finish, uh, they, they will be um, you know, offered a job uh, in their field and so basically then they will need to finish their 960 hours which would take up to 12 months 
and they can then apply for a permanent residence. So within 12 months of arriving in Canada, they would have the opportunity to apply for permanent residence. So it's really an excellent opportunity for people who have that um, as their goal. So I think that about exhausts my uh, talking. <laughs> if there is uh, any questions, then certainly I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Christy. It was very informative and detailed presentation. Um, yes, we have a few questions rolling in. Most of them have been answered by our team, but uh, there are some popular questions which I like to answer. Uh, I mean, I mean, I would like to uh, you to answer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um talking about the expenses that we have um is there any scholarship options for the students who are um, reaching gpc so um all students who are accepted into any program in uh, gpc are provided with a 500 dollars entrance scholarship uh, in their first year so um, those scholarships are normally provided to students in october uh, at we, we host a scholarship reception and it's a, a really lovely event and we uh, provide students with their scholarship checks. Uh, again, the business diploma students have uh, greater opportunities for scholarships in their second year and they can apply for uh, scholarships based on their marks in their first year, anywhere between 500 and 5,000 Canadian dollars that they can apply to their second year uh, expenses. Great, thank you. That's a good opportunity for uh, international students. Yes. Yeah, we're proud um, of that. <laughs> yes. So uh, there are other questions like if we accepting um, a PTE, PTE test. At this point, we haven't uh, started accepting PTE just yet. Um, you know, we've relied quite heavily on IELTS, and we're very interested to see how Duolingo. Um, goes because it seems like it's a very affordable option for students um, and they they do promise a, a level of security that uh, you know we're quite impressed with so so we're interested to see how that goes for this year but not PTE just yet all right thank you for answering that uh, there are a couple of questions where they're asking uh, what is the ratio of Indian students there Yep, yeah, so this past intake, um, I think probably uh, of our international student population, um, I would say about 20% of the population was Indian. That's a good ratio. <laughs> yeah, we've tried really hard to diversify our population um, internationally because we understand that you know, when Indian students come to Canada, they don't want to study in a classroom full of Indian students. They would like the opportunity to have, um, you know, access to people from around the world, which is the beauty of international education. Yes, certainly. Uh, there's another question. Um, they're asking how many hours of class would be in a week or uh, in a day? I mean, how would the schedule would work? Yeah, so basically classes run five days a week. Um, normally, any time between nine and four. Sometimes there are classes that are evening classes, but uh, those are, are not necessarily common. So um, in both continuing care assistant and administrative assistant, the schedule is a, a full nine to four day every day. Uh, in the business diploma course, then, the, uh, the schedule is a little bit more changeable. Uh, courses are scheduled throughout the day and uh, students, depending upon which courses they're taking, might have uh, some, some changes in their schedule. All right. Um, there's, uh, there's a question uh, that they're asking is that uh, there's a particular board that, uh, that is by the US government that is NWAC. So would that be accepted for our applications? Well, you know, that's something that I'm actually not familiar with. So it's it's a, a test. It, it's sort of a board. It's a, like we have CBSC board and right. ICC board that there's another board for US. Ah, OK, well, you know, what? Uh, that's something I'm going to have to research and get back to you on. So maybe I'll just uh, I'll look that I'll look that up and I'll let you know, Shivani, and you can uh, sure. send that answer out. Yeah. 
Yes, we can answer that later. Sure. Um, right. So um, there's another question uh, by uh, by the audience that uh, how much gap that we will be accepting if a student have done a grade 12 um, in, in 2018 or above, you know 2017 or 16, how much gap are we going to accept for the diplomas? You know, um, one of the great things about the regional college system is that um, many of our students have uh, experienced longer gaps between their high school education and their post-secondary education. So in terms of our standards, um, we actually have no limit on what that gap can be. Um, my understanding from immigration, though, is that there is probably a, um, a limit of somewhere in that eight or nine years. Um, but that's just something that I've heard. I don't know that for sure. But in terms of Great Plains College, um, we've accepted students who have um, who have you know much greater gaps than eight years. So we're happy to um, you know have the conversation at the very least. And they would have to see the visa requirements as well, from exactly. which part of country they are applying. Right. Yeah, exactly. So definitely the, the gap uh, is really more of an issue for immigration than it is for us. Right. Um, there's another question that they're asking, is there any co-op options? Are there any internships that can be offered or any on the campus if that can be helped? The, the only uh, course that we have a co-op option in right now is the administrative assistant course. Um, the other courses don't have, I shouldn't say that, the, the CCA or continuing care assistant course, the clinical placements could very well be considered uh, a co-op opportunity because they're put into placements um, in their field throughout the course of their education. So um, yeah, the only one that doesn't have that uh, feature would be the business diploma course. Uh, but having said that, we are um, for 2020, uh, 2021, um, we're instituting a position um, for a job coach uh, within the college system. And so that person is um, going to work with individuals to help them to, you know, kind of be as strong as they can be as candidates for employment once they're done. So um, a, a co-op aspect to the business diploma could be developing within the next few years. Right, great. Um, we have tons of questions rolling in, but we are <laughs> out of time. So uh, before we end, <laughs> before well, we certainly, end, we'd like to. Yeah. They can certainly feel, yeah. Yep. They can certainly feel free to email me or Niti and uh, and let us know what their questions are. We're happy to answer and uh, always happy to to talk with our agent partners and um, you know still create a, a feeling of connectedness even though we're all far apart right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have another session on the 11th in case somebody so if somebody has missed out on today we can join on the 11th. Right, and if some questions are not answered, be assured that we will answer post the session. Our team would be contacting you for the same. Right, thank you, everyone. Thank Christy, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Bye.